What up? Oh my god, we're live. Hang on, do I have all my settings right? I think I do. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. Got any tips for any for people who want to start making, start being comic creators? Um, yeah, don't... Don't, uh, don't only draw people, people's heads, learn body language and expressions, uh, like expressive anatomy, not just like a lot of new comic creators draw a lot of like, uh, shoulders up talking scenes because drawing people is hard. Um, that's probably the biggest one is like learn to draw people quickly, like put that in as as your priority so that when you're uh when you start drawing comics you can actually draw like different types of shots and different people at different distances different angles so that your your stuff is much more uh cinematic than just like talking heads is this working all right cool we're good right everybody let me know if the let me know if the audio is good Cause, uh, yeah, we'll make it a little bit louder. All right. So we, we will wait one sec. All right, cool. Uh, we're going to jump into it. So I have this page almost done, uh, on the left. I've been working on this for the last like couple days, like when I have time. Uh, so we've got, this is one of the, I think, how many panels is this? This is like one of the, the pages with the most panels in the whole book. One, two, three, four, five, little triangles, six, seven, eight, nine, and then this little inside. So this is a 10 panel page, which takes a while. Even though they're, they're smaller, there's still like a lot of detail in there. So this one's almost done. I just have to finish panel three, this like wide pink and like uh tan orangey page um nice audio sounds good uh so she starts to freeze over here uh ice comes up on the throne uh, and starts to take her over at the bottom of the page and then the next page is a continuation of that sequence where she's like uh like completely overrun by ice and then we've got another one of our chili men our infamous chili men um, here in the middle panel. So we can definitely get through this panel pretty quickly. And then this one on the left. And then this page will be done. And then we'll see how, I mean, it shouldn't take too long to do these ice panels because they're, they're pretty abstracted. Um, they're gonna look a lot like, they're gonna look a lot like this panel here, which is like, as far as comic coloring goes, probably some of the easiest stuff you can do because it's a lot of just like really smart but efficient stuff where you just like put in a bunch of shapes and start layering different gradients over so that you give the illusion of like that you spend a lot of time on it. Um, so we'll continue. It's basically going to be two versions of what's on the bottom here and then this Chili Man one will take a while. Uh, because I don't know why, but this fire, it's like the way, the, the way this fire is drawn, it looks amazing, but it, for some reason it just takes a long time to color. I don't know why. Cause you have to basically sit there and follow all these lines. Um, and if you don't, it looks really sloppy. So this chili man will take a while, this chili man panel, but we'll see how far we can get. And then I already finished this page, uh, which is the beginning of this sequence. So this is like every panel is sort of based on what I established. Uh, on this page. Um, so th as the book goes, 
like each the pages get more and more like crazy with more and more colors um the palette is over here on the left oh wait hang on let me set it to uh yeah cool the palette is over here on the left um i've gradually been expanding it as the book goes on so it started with just like the stuff that's like here and then i added a bunch of pinks and greens and I start to like blend them together so there's even more colors now um, so by this point in the book we're more than halfway through it's really wild so we sort of have to basically just this is this is where comic coloring is gets kind of like um, I don't want to say boring but like you you definitely have to like put your head down and just like get the work done because this panel here in the middle um, is basically exactly what we're doing here in the middle. Like you basically just have to replicate exactly what you already did, which is not as fun as like coming up with a new style, but it's just sort of the nature of it. Um, so here you can see how this page started. This is like when I just flatted in the backgrounds. Um, so I just was like putting gradients in to try to kind of like get an understanding of how this page was going to flow. So the first thing I did was just try to block out the panels so that they all popped from each other. So we've got two yellow panels popping off of this kind of like orangey purple panel, two purple and blue panels, and then I started playing with gradients and reverse gradients. So in order, even though these are basically the same thing, these bottom two panels, it's two panels of ice just like taking over. I needed to figure out some way to kind of get them to pop from each other so that you could tell they were two different panels. So I went ahead and went with almost exactly the same color scheme, but the gradients are opposing. So that as this one gets dark, this one gets light. So there's always contrast between them. And then when it was done, there I sort of had a nice foundation and I kind of understood what the basic color scheme of every panel was so when i was adding more detail i guaranteed that there would be contrast if that makes sense oh what am i drinking i'm drinking a uh sp spin drift not sponsored uh raspberry lime it's the one where they put like fruit in the sparkling water and when you drink it you have to complain to the manager i guess it seems this seems like a drink that like people who complain to the manager would drink. I don't know why. Few OG YouTube. Are we OG? I feel like we've only been on YouTube for like a year. Um I see a retracted message in the chat. I don't know if you deleted that, but if you're trying to use the term AI, it's blocked. <laughs> just to keep, not to keep, not to silence you or anything. It's just, there was a lot of people showing up uh, saying awful things about AI. So it's probably, I'm assuming it's blocked on live chat too. Just FYI. Um, that's mostly to block the trolls. Uh, not to silence our fans. Hmm. So this panel's cool because it's like, uh, it's pretty surreal. I think this might be one of the only times that this happens where this character like grows flowers and plants like growing out of her. I don't really know if this happens specific, like a lot of weird stuff happens in this comic, but I don't know if the flowers happen again. Um, so the challenge on this panel in particular is just getting everything to pop because she, her color scheme is always green and pink but these background archways, I already did them on the other page and I made them pink, so now I have to figure out how to get everything to pop. We'll figure it out. Uh, 
How do I get the duo tone? Oh, that's just a brush. Um, I've got a bunch of half tone brushes from True Grit Texture Supply. Here, I'll put. I'll write the name in the chat so people can look it up. Just Google True Grit Texture Supply like this, and um, look for the beat tone. Beat tone. I can't remember. It. I think it's spelled like this. Beat tone. But the beat tone uh, brush pack is like maybe the only texture pack that I use anymore, to be totally honest. Like, I don't think I use any other textures besides the that beat tone, half tone thing. Um, and it's really, really helpful. Yeah, so this one's tricky because. She's got like vines, vines and leaves growing out of her, but she's green. And so far I've only ever used, I'm trying to keep my palette pretty limited. Maybe for now while I'm flatting, I'll just use orange, to be honest, because at least that way it'll pop. Because I'm basically in the flatting stage, which means I don't necessarily have to use the final color for things. You just need contrast so you can see what you're doing. So I'm just going to use orange for now. This one's this one's going to be interesting to figure out for sure. Yeah, purple. I was thinking about purple. Purple's not a bad option. We might try that one. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of like purple stemmed plants. Like yeah, basil stuff like that. Hi, Ash. Welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, yellow. Yellow is a good option. Orange. I may be using the worst option right now. I'm using. I'm using. Orange. Like, kind of secretly hoping it's going to work, but I feel like it's not going to be a quick read that it's plants, and that's. That's really what I want is for you to look at this panel and quickly be like, oh, she's sprouting vines, you know. But I don't think orange is a quick enough read. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get them in. Knowing, knowing Lydia, these are like a very specific, like she used some very specific reference for like the species of flower, um, or she's like combining multiple references. The problem is, oh, I think I'm making calls about what's, what I think are flowers and what are leaves, but I might, I think up here I'm coloring I'm coloring leaves the color of flowers. White might work for the flowers because there are white flowers and then you can put like yellow or pink inside, you know? Or the flowers could just be yellow, yeah. Oh man, we got such... We got such a funny comment. I just... Uh, I just didn't even know what to say. I didn't respond. But <laughs> I I cut a video, like I cut a video together of Lydia um, inking, like line art. And <laughs> there was a comment that was like, I've seen what you do to her line art. You scan it and then you, you make it all crunchy and you can see all the pixels. Like <laughs> here, if you zoom in, like, I mean, you can see all the pixels. They're like, you ruin her line art. You scan it and you make it all crunchy. I can see the pixels. And then it, w but it was like my mom scolding me, like the tone of the comment. Like it was like, don't pretend you don't. Like I think they, I think they called me Mister. They were like, don't pretend you don't, Mister. You crunch that line art down, and I can see all the pixels. You ruin that beautiful line art. 
and I was like, okay, well, first of all, <laughs> I am not the one who scans and processes these. Lydia is the one who scans and pro like the person who drew it is the one who makes the call on how to process like post process and scan her own artwork. And second of all, you're supposed to do this. <laughs> like this is what it's supposed to look like. If you look at any professional comic book artist's pages that they've scanned, like you actually want them aliased. Like you don't want there to be soft edges because it it's supposed to hit the paper and spread. A, like the ink is naturally going to hit the paper and spread a little bit. So you actually want super crisp lines if you're going to go to print. Like that that's this is like actually how you do it. I just like could not stop laughing at like, don't pretend you don't. Like it was this big thing that we were like trying to hide. I was like, sorry mom. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm in trouble for the <laughs> for the <laughs> for the way you scan the line art. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everybody say hi to Lydia. Lydia's in chat. I forgot to tell you about that comment, Lydia. It made me laugh so much. I couldn't stop I couldn't stop thinking about it being like I guess I I guess I'm stereotyping but just like the way they wrote it and like the tone of it like really sounded like an older person like our parents like somebody who's in that generation which was even more mystifying because you'd think like an older person would know the most about like working analog and like using a scanner which is now like you know 20 30 years <laughs> 20 30 years ago that that was like industry standard for everyone yeah also yeah also the reason that one of the reason one of the benefits uh to having this like crunchy quote unquote or like stair step line art is you can use it's so much easier to grab if you have to you can grab the magic wand and grab a shape inside it because most of the problems with like quick select tools uh, in a program like Photoshop is is it's trying to guess where the edges are and that's usually because there's like some kind of like color shift like you know it doesn't know exactly where like if you look at an uh, you know a line that isn't crunchy there's like gray pixels in it and so it doesn't exactly know where to grab the edge of the line but if you've got it crunchy like this it actually makes it like better um, I don't know I just could not I think I think I didn't respond. Like I had some, I have to be really careful cause like I've always got some like smarmy response like ready to go and then I'm always like, eh, <laughs> it's like, it's not worth it. I don't want to validate this crazy person. Sorry if you've, if you commented that and you're watching and I'm making fun of you, I apologize. But that was kind of out of pocket FYI. <laughs> I'm assuming it was somebody who's not like a fan. Uh, but just so you know, uh, this is how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Currently working on a visual novel and I am replicating the PC-98 aesthetic, which means drawing line art and then scanning it before coloring it pixel by pixel. PC-98, so that's like from the 16-bit era? Is that like around the same time as like the I actually know a decent amount about retro computing because I watch, uh, <laughs> this is maybe this is totally like a poser thing to say, but I'm a big fan of the 8-bit guy. Uh, shout out 8-bit guy. And I watch all his videos about like the Commodore and Commodore Pet and Commodore 64. And then I'm really into like retro gaming through SNES and NES and Genesis. A little bit of Turbo Graphics, but I don't actually, is the PC nine? What is the PC ninety eight? Is that what the Turbo Graphics was called in Japan or whatever, or is that something different? Or is that just Windows ninety eight aesthetic? Is that like CD ROM game aesthetic, like nineteen ninety eight PC games? Is it like Mist or whatever? When was that game? There's also that really awesome girl on TikTok who makes like fake CD-ROM games. She like films herself and then like bit crushes the audio and puts her photos through like a filter and, and it looks like you're playing some weird CD-ROM game, but she like makes them now. 
That's like one of my favorite accounts to follow. I can't remember her name. I should like post her stuff just to give her a, not that she needs it, she has more followers than us. She's like so talented. It's annoying, it's annoying. Yeah, see the spirit, this, the spirit, this is the character, the spirit being green made like so much sense in every other page because green always popped against our color palette. And now of course I have to figure out how to do these uh, leaves. PC90, oh no, uh, the Turbo Graphics was called the PC Engine, right? Before, it was called the Turbo Graphics in America. Pro probably because they were like, oh, American kids aren't gonna like anything with PC in the name, because it sounds like an IBM computer. Back then, I bet PC was like something your parents talked about. So they probably didn't want to call the Turbo Graphics the PC Engine, so they changed the name to Turbo Graphics 16, because it was like all about the bits. I guess these could be orange. Like they don't look, they definitely look good orange, but in terms of like contrast, but I'm just worried about like, I guess the forms are so organic, like you'll, you'll know. Oh, I missed a spot on the antler. Yeah, also Lydia, anybody, anybody who has questions about inking or line art, ask Lydia, cause she's in chat. Now's a really good time. Oh, another thing, another thing that people should not do in the comments, and this is not like that big of a deal. Um, but if you have a question, <laughs> don't write a comment that says, like on our videos that says, hey, I have a question. And then don't add, like if you have a question, ask it or write it in the discord or whatever. But don't, <laughs> I can tell you right now, like I love, I, I genuinely love helping people. Like it's really, especially actually lately, I've been feeling like sort of weirdly proud of the fact that we can like keep alive human comics and like analog techniques and everything by like helping teach them. But if you have a question, don't write, I have a question. One person even recently wrote, please reach out. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I, I've, just don't have time like there's no way i i love you but i i can't remember i'm never gonna remember to hit you up you know like on top of everything else so just putting it out there like if you've got a question you know just ask it or go to the disc the discord is the best place to ask the questions because other people there uh can help you too who are not us who are maybe less busy and you'd be surprised how much like communal knowledge is on that discord Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Famicom was the family computer. Yeah, yeah. I I keep almost um. I keep almost buying a Famicom, because there's like really cool Famicoms. Uh, I guess like people might not know this, but like I'm a huge fan of retro gaming. Like that's pretty much the only. If I do play video games anymore, that's like all I want to play is like, like eight or sixteen bit era games, and um, I, I there's like. I keep thinking about trying to get a Mr., which is like Mr. FPGA, which is like a really cool emulator that'll play like a bunch of old games. But part of me just wants an original Nintendo or not. And I keep looking at on eBay, people will sell like Famicoms that have like the HDMI mod. So you can play your Famicom like on, on a modern TV. I keep almost, uh, I, I don't know. Like I don't, should not spend that money, but I, I keep looking at them. Oh, what do I use for writing your script? Yeah, just Google Docs. But you can, I mean, literally use anything to, to the, the good news about writing comics is you can use anything. Like you could just write it in the notes app, you know, on your phone or something. You just need to understand, like somebody, probably you or an artist you're working with just needs to understand what to do. And that can just be any kind of text document. Oh yeah, it is. This is the, you're right, Joshua, this is the famous Junji Ito panel. I posted the still of this the other day, but this is how it turned out. Um, this is like one of our most famous videos. It has like 4 million views or something and it's 
it's it's this is the one where it's like lydia you're like inking this and then at the end i say like hey and guess what like we managed to hold your attention for a whole minute like i say that at the end and a lot of people were like whoa cool and a lot of people were like <laughs> no you didn't like that's the one where they go into the comments and they write like haha i didn't watch the whole thing and i'm like you genius <laughs> you spent another 35 seconds writing that comment what an incredible amount of time you saved um that's my that's my favorite this video of inking this panel has led to some of my absolute favorite comments of all time um it's also the one where people self-report the most that they are like not they don't know comics because i say hey like this panel might remind you of Junji Ito, or it might remind you of Steve Ditko, or whatever. And a lot of people will be like, a lot of people go in the comments and are like, that didn't, it didn't mean anything to me. I don't know what any of that is. And I'm like, I, I feel sad that you're willing to like publicly admit ignorance because you could like Google any of those names or like ask for more information. Um, I guess that's another, so on, I mean, truly, um, Somebody asked at the top of the stream what um, what like advice for a new a new comic artist. Um, definitely learn anatomy and all that stuff. But an another one that I, I really have been seeing a lot like in the comments or like on Discord is like I think sometimes people don't people want to make comics, but they don't. How do I say this? They don't maybe know a lot about comics like they don't know about different styles or different eras like and you can't really make comics if you don't know what you like or what styles might influence your own style like I think it's just important to be like kind of a scholar of the art form and that means like being a big fan of not just one person or one era or one country's output you know I don't know I think the reason that I like our comics so much is that we bring like French and Belgian and Japanese and American and 60s and 80s and modern like we I feel like I feel like maybe one of the things that I dislike the most is seeing people like shut down or shut off or not be open-minded because like being having a lot of influences makes you like a much better creator so that's another um it's another thing it's another piece of advice All right, let's get the uh, let's get the glow in. Oh, I've been trying. I'll show that. I'll show it. Uh, I'll show the technique on stream. I'll just do it live. But I've been trying a new technique for these kinds of like glows. It's kind of interesting. I like flat it all pretty chunky and then I go in and try to do some fun stuff to it to get it to feel a little bit more like uh, ethereal, whimsical. Um, your expansive nib collection. Yeah, that's a really common question that uh, I always just tell people Tachikawa or Tashikawa. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Tashi. Does anybody know if in Japanese is the CH pronounced CH or SH? Like, is it Tashikawa? Anyway, that's. I always just. People are like, what kind of nib is that? Or what kind of dip pen is that? I always just say ta Tashikawa because that's. That's the one I know from uh, one, <laughs> from some of the videos we've made, but um, I I don't know. I'm always like, I know there's like a lot more. I know you have like a lot more. So maybe maybe like a nib only video would actually be pretty solid, right? Hmm. It can be both. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. 
I guess maybe a better follow-up question was, does, does anybody know how to pronounce the Japanese art supplier ta, ta, Tashikawa? Here, this is how it's spelled. It's spelled like this, Tachikawa. Tashi. If I were a betting man, I'd say it's S-H. Like sounding, but I don't know. Yeah, so this, these glows are merging. See, this is the fun part about uh, coloring Lydia's artwork is, uh, hang on. I had the wrong brush. Okay, so the fun thing about coloring Lydia's artwork is you you are forced to appreciate all the details that, that you put in here. Um, like as I'm coloring, I notice really cool stuff, and I just now realized how much these two glows from around her hand and around this like dip pen, like how how much they merge, and how like the the archways in the hallway up here sort of double as motion lines. It's like a very clever compositional. Um, it's a very clever composition where like the lines of the architecture allow your eye to follow the movement that's intended in the panel. That's like actual next level stuff right there. So I'm, I was, okay, so I was wasting time uh, because I was painstakingly like coloring around the outside of her hand. And then I realized that I'm wasting time and I can literally just color over top of her hand because then I can go to her, uh, her, select, uh oh, hang on, except we've got stuff on the wrong layer, select, yeah, okay, so I can select her hand and then go back to this layer and just delete it. So now I don't, I can have just, I don't have to have spent time coloring around the outside because I can just color over top and then delete the, the hand in the middle. It's like saves so much time to do stuff like that. It's important to like l get ready to like load up selections and, and save yourself time whenever you can because that kind of stuff really does add up. Yeah, the Lydia, the Lydia in chat right now is the artist who drew this page. It's a big moment, <laughs> big celebrity moment. Man, one thing I gotta do is I gotta figure out how to get like uh, enough royalty-free lo-fi hip hop. Like I need to basically get music playing in the background of a stream, but it needs to all be music that's super chill and doesn't like interfere with uh, me talking. Um, so I'm assuming it would be like lo-fi beats to study slash relax to. Um, but I also obviously like I don't want to get copyright strikes. So it has to be either royalty free or I need to make really what I should do is make some song that's like an hour long and has like enough subtle shifts in it. It's just like a super generic lo-fi hip hop trap beat thing. It has enough like subtle shifts in it to to not be monotonous for an hour, but also not so dramatic that it calls any attention to itself. And then I can have that on in the background so it's not just like dead silent on this stream. That would be good. It's another another thing to add to the list of things to do. But uh, if anybody does want to, you can 
I highly recommend watching this stream with another tab open. Open the, the lo-fi girl beats to study slash relax to. And like mix, you know, just do a little like poor man's mix by like lowering the volume of the player on the lo-fi beats in your other tab so that it all blends together and then you can have a full experience. A full chill like color stream experience, you know what I mean? All right, so this looks really bad, <laughs> this like glow, but we're gonna fix it, don't worry. It's gonna get a lot better. It's too chunky right now. It's like too, it's too literal to the lines. Like the lines are very, I'm like obeying the lines and, and using a hard brush and it's just kind of becoming like these chunky pointy shapes. It looks more like, like a sea anemone than an actual like glow. So we got to work on that, but we'll get there. Right now I'm just trying to rough the shape in. The real question is what color is this like dip pen? I guess it could be like orange too, right? But it'd be kind of cool if it was like green or something. Maybe we can just like make it the same color as her hair. I just love how this is like a unabashed, uh, <clears throat> just unabashed tribute to comic making itself. Like one of the MacGuffins is a dip pen. It's just like, I mean, we're not even trying to like hide our love of classic, classic comic making. So meta, it's a dip pen that was inked with a dip pen. Something like that. It's cool. I think it is nice, it pops. It's sort of, I don't know, I don't really know. It's, it's like, it looks like we're trying to say some really significant thing about how both the pen and this character are green. I don't know if there's like a important connection there that I didn't think about, but it's cool. It pops, it looks good. LPTV, hello. I realized that we have a Garden State. I signed us up for Garden State Comic Fest, which is like June, June 22nd. And I was trying to figure out if I can finish this in time to get it printed for June 22nd. Probably, right? 
I signed us up for Garden State Comic Fest like November last year. I didn't really think about, you know, how I was going to get sick and it was going to screw up the whole comic coloring progress. It seemed so likely back then that I would finish, but we can do June, right? June 22nd. We would have to go to the printer by beginning of June. I guess we could do like a con exclusive version that was like, I don't know, just this story maybe? Like maybe it doesn't have that backup in it or, because that would be the one thing that might take long, right? I don't know, we have to think about that. I just realized that. I was like looking through my email and I was like, ooh, like the Morristown Comic Convention is in June. <clears throat> so we gotta figure something out. I'm sure we could have a bunch of merch ready. I gotta actually f do the, the pins. I started working on the tape layouts which will be fun. I have to figure out what to do for the tape, the cassette tape layout uh, for the uh, for the third one. Something like that. I'm already bored of drawing the <laughs> drawing the glow. I should probably just finish it though. Okay, so one thing that I've been trying is after I like rough in the the shape of a glow, like kind of with the tendrils. This happens a lot in our comics. It's this like very specific shaped sort of fire or electricity or glow it's the sort of like it's like a nice blend of uh tendrils and cloud um and i've been kind of like trying to figure out different ways to color it because it shows up a lot so i'm trying to kind of have it nailed you know like how it's supposed to actually appear but one thing i've been trying is i'll get the uh I'll get the tendrils in, right? Like this stage. And then I'll set the brush to like 50% and I'll just start making circles. Like around it. Ooh, that like kills my processor. Why is it doing that? Is that too much? I should be doing this on a separate layer. That's really what I should be doing. It helps though. It's like, this is that like Kirby crackle thing. Here, hang on. Do I have enough steps? Eh, it's fine, it's fine. Whatever, I'll just do it all in the same layer. Maybe I'll set the brush to 40 or something. 35, 40, 39. Anyway, this starts to like soften those hard edges a little bit. My computer really doesn't like it though. You know why? It's because I'm running, uh, my computer can totally run Photoshop, but when I stream, I also screen record like locally. I've got like a quick, I've got quick time running in the background, just like screen recording the whole screen so I can like edit this footage down in high res. And I think when you run a full screen screen record and Photoshop, I think it doesn't like it, it like dies. this I might have to do I might have to save this for when I'm not streaming because it's like Photoshop does this when it's like the processor is breaking it like thinks you're trying to like draw lines instead of dots and it like like explodes it's so weird
it works though it like definitely helps feel more analog i guess i've made videos about this before it's like i call it like digital crackle it's like kirby kirby crackle on steroids with the power of like transparency see but then what you can do is you make a uh, a mask not a clipping mask a layer mask and you pick one of your halftone brushes and you can like erase out the edges of it that's where it gets like that's what i've been trying lately is like using the dots as negative space and it like works really well i mean it looks weird it looks weird up close but it works really well if you like go in and actually like commit to it you know and try to put the bigger dots on the outside so it's more of a fade And then you can go in with a not half tone brush and get some of it back. Sort of combining like the harshness of the like half tone brush with. like combining basically combining because the halftone brush is really harsh right like it makes these like really chunky dots if you zoom in they're very like rough and if you combine that with like the smoothness of the digital brush set to semi-transparent you can like blend some techniques anyway it's pretty subtle but when you put it all together it starts to like basically you've got you've got multiple things going on you've got like just the flats of the yellow lines or the yellow painting that's following the lines. You've got semi-transparent dots in the yellow. You've got the harsh dots of a halftone brush that are like kind of like pulling back some of the yellow. And then you're starting to mess around with making some of those harsh dots semi-transparent. So like everything can be faded in different ways. It's pretty cool. Anyway, what's some what's some recommendations to make someone go holy cow? Color matters. Oh yeah, like if somebody has only ever read, if somebody's only ever read black and white and you want to show off like what color can do um i'd say for western comics uh like american comics read the many deaths of layla star well it's the many deaths of layla star i think is actually set in like dubai right but so i don't know if it's it's i think it's by american creators but The Many Deaths of Layla Starr is one of the best colored books I've ever seen. Uh, James Stokoe made a comic called Orc Stain. That's like one of the best uses of color I've ever seen. Um, Tok There's an image series by Rick Remender called Tokyo Ghost, and I think Matt Hollingsworth colored it. Tokyo Ghost. Some of the best coloring I've ever... I don't know. It's Those are the series... Yeah, I'd say Many Deaths of Layla Star, Orc Stain, and Tokyo Ghost. Like, those are the series that, even if you didn't really think about color as, like, its own art form, I think if you read those series, I, I think even the most inexperienced person could look at that and realize what color is doing in terms of, like, setting the mood and building the world and creating, like, really interesting contrast between the character. 
the character in the background. It's pretty cool. Probably also, there's probably a bunch of like French, like Mobius. I'm sure Mobius has colored most of his own stuff. I would say like, just look at the work of Mobius. The problem, the problem with Googling Mobius now though, if you like look up Mobius, the artist, like half the stuff is like AI, like attempts at creating Mobius art. I noticed. Um, like he he must be he must be one of the more common like prompts for people who are doing like AI art, because it's such a like a distinct he has such a distinct style. So you have to be really careful when you like look up Mobius now that you're like finding the real Mobius stuff. Because you can grab something that sort of looks good, and then when you actually look closer, you realize like a bunch of the background is super screwed up. Like it didn't know how to draw. It didn't know how to render the landscape or buildings properly. Yeah, I'd say Mobius. Mobius's color is pretty great. I'm pretty sure that James Stokoe. I'm not 100%, but I'm almost positive that James Stokoe is like directly influenced by Mobius's colors. Like when you see those two together, they have to be, he had to have been consciously trying to imitate him, right? Anyway, here, I'll put it in the chat. Check out mini deaths of Layla, Star, Tokyo, Ghost, and what was the other one I said? Oh, anything by Mobius. Oh, an orc stain. Those are probably my favorite colored comics of all time. Actually, kind of like the glow softer. This is more like transparency variance than I normally put in our stuff, to be totally honest. But oh, it's kind of a one-time thing. It's a very special MacGuffin. I think it's okay. I think it's fine. Whoa, that's not fine. Hang on. Yeah, Orkstein, Orkstein is one of the most Orkstein is one of the most underrated graphic novels like ever. I mean, it's one of those ones where people who know like know, they're it's I don't know anybody who has who who knows Orkstein and has read it who like doesn't think it's amazing. But I know I know that there's a lot of people who have never heard of it. I think if Orkstein were like an album, it would be like I don't know. What's like a band that like if you know, you know, like, if you're a music fan, you're like, they're gods. But it's not like the most mainstream thing. I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example. But Orkstein is like, it's, it's, it, that's where it's at, man. I read an interview with James Stokoe at some point where he was just like, yeah, I, I, I don't know most of Photoshop. Like, I literally only know the gradient tool. <laughs> like he never really like i think his style was born of necessity which is like why it's so amazing because he he doesn't really know what he's doing he just knows color theory and he knows how to like draw gradients i think like his entire comic coloring is like just gradients and like he puts white highlights in or something Well, that's nice, Gundolf. Thank you for being here. 
Also a cool name, Gundolf. Because obviously it sounds like Gandalf, but it also sounds like Dolph Lundgren with a gun. Yeah, the midnight. That's pretty good. The midnight is a pretty good reference. Like if you know if you know music and you you know the midnight, you're like, yeah, like these guys are underrated, but they have their own like pretty dedicated following too. Like uh, gunship. Gunship is another one. Oh, another, you know what a good example would be is like everybody in who's like into guitar is always like arguing about like who the best guitarist of all time is. It's like, is it Eddie Van Halen? You know, is it, uh, you know, Zach Wilde or whatever. Like there's all these like guitar gods that people argue over. Like who, Steve Vai, like who's the best guitar player? And anybody, I know a lot of people who are like, if you actually know guitar and you like dig one level deeper, like all all the best dudes who who know guitar will tell you that it's Jeff Beck. Like like he's not always the one that people think of first, but if you know, like you know. And I feel like that's sort of how like Orc Stain or James Stoko are. Like if you actually if you actually know like that's that's the real one, you know. Yeah, MF Doom, that's like the hip hop equivalent, right? It's like everybody argues Biggie Tupac, but if you actually know, like MF Doom is like really the the, the one, right? All right, so this one's close. I mean, you can see where this panel is going. It's like, it's gonna be mostly just like detailing. Like it's gonna come down to like, drawing these objects that are floating in the air this amazing bunny like sticking its head through oh yeah dude lydia dolph lundgren has like a masters in like chemical engineering or something Uh, Dolph Lundgren is like annoyingly cool. He has like a master's in chemical engineering. He's like a world class like fighter athlete. He's also like six seven or something. He's so big. Talk about winning the genetic lottery. Like I don't think anybody has won the genetic lottery more than Dolph Lundgren. And he's like nice too. He's like legendarily like very nice. annoying all right we got to put like a big glow like over the whole thing because this book is like emitting light so let's put something big on it We can, okay, hang on. We can help separate her from the background by obeying the laws of lighting. So the there's like a big glow coming off of the book. It's gonna hit her really strongly, but it's not gonna reach the background. So we can actually erase it out from the background to help like 
Oh wait, I'm also doing that thing where I'm wasting time because I've already flatted her. Hang on. So we grab her. We grab these. Okay. Oops. Yeah, my computer totally runs fine most, most of the time, but man, it hates it when I am screen recording the whole screen and streaming and running Photoshop. That definitely like makes it angry. It has like trouble, it's like really, there's a lot of lag. Oh, there we go, nope, wait, I had it right the first time. Ugh, hang on. Here we go, I gotta grab this one too. Whatever. This is actually, I've now wasted more time than if I had just sat here and erased it. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so that's like the light hitting her, which is pretty nice. And that really does help her like pop from, from the background. But then we do have to bring some kind of glow back over top. So let me do that. Also, I actually want the book, the way the book looks here is perfect, where like the brightest part is the pages. That actually makes it look like it's glowing. So I'm gonna erase out a bunch of the glow from here. Something like that. So first I just wanna like establish the glow on the objects and then I'll go back in with a different glow and put it back over top and it'll look really good. But now, now there's actually like a light source throwing light upwards onto her, which looks really cool. Um, that's cool. It looks like she's holding like a, like a candle or something. Like it's got that like old school like candle, like 19th century, like I'm holding a candle glow on her body. But we'll do another, another like less intense environmental glow here. And this one will be like based on blending modes. It could just be white like that. It's not bad. cool I like it and then we can make her eyes yellow so she really like it looks like that light that's coming from below her is like catching her eyes
Or maybe we just make it white so that her eyes really pop. Let's do that. Let's go pure white. And then we'll do some shading so that, that her eyes actually pop. Um, cool. Yeah, we're getting there. I mean, this page is almost done. It's so close. It's just like a lot, gonna be a lot of like fiddly details in this third panel here. Oh, and I guess we have to do the the glowing pen down here. But it looks cool. And it looks really good as a spread next to, it's gonna be next to this page. So the two of them are gonna look cool together. Every once in a while I'll like stop and do this and I'll like simulate like what they would look like next to each other as a spread. Um, just to check, Oops. like just to check to make sure that they like go together because like they're supposed to be the same scene, you know? <laughs> Especially in this book where we're like jumping between different worlds and that like the different worlds have different looks, you know? So you can see on this, last time I did this panel, it's the same exact idea. This like long hallway with the archways. I actually went in and did some pink variation for like all, like there's the ice cream cone, the mountains, the planet, the floating city. I actually went in and did some like color variation just to add some detailing, which is not like, it's not that big on the page, but you definitely feel the mountains being darker or the ice cream cone being lighter. Like if I zoom way in, you can see that's like a lot of fiddly detail and it seems kind of like it would be a waste of time at this scale. When you zoom out, you definitely like feel it, you know, it's pretty cool. All right, let's do some shading. I'm tired of flatting. So I've got this glow on her, right? So I'll turn it off. It extends really far. Like it goes from all the way from the book all the way to like onto her hair. Like it almost wraps around her behind her. So I'm gonna go in with an eraser and actually like paint out uh, the glow so that it feels like the only parts being affected by it are the uh, the parts that are actually being lit, you know? It's subtle, but it helps. I feel like a place that would like definitely have a shadow is like the top of your collar, like behind your collarbone, right? I don't know. That's fine. Whatever. We're going to figure out what to do with her skull, the skull on top of her head. Um, yeah, there's not enough contrast. Like, I got to actually, if I'm going to do the shadows, I actually got to do them. It's a little, like, too subtle. The yellow highlight is, like, way too similar to the, like, green skin color.
For some reason, I feel like I have to be really careful with this skull, because the skull, the skull can get like monochromatic really quickly and it can look really bad. And usually I put this like cool pink fade on it. But I have to be really careful because the background, like <sighs> the background right behind her is pink. So it's just like gonna quickly like start to blend together if I'm not careful. Is that too subtle? It's maybe maybe that's okay. It sort of adds like a nice. I think if the edges are defined, it's it's okay. It sort of adds a nice like variation to her. It it's a little dangerous though because it does it does like make it blend into the into the background. It's I think it's better than it just being plain green though. Like if the shadows are purple, does that work? Maybe. What if I just make it a multiply layer? It turns it from pink into purple. Getting a little muddy though. I don't know, man. This is how I this is how I shaded issue two. I just used like purple or pink set to multiply. Hmm. Oh, thanks for coming, Doctor Fate. Yeah, appreciate it. I kind of like it just like regular pink. Yeah, that's better. So when it's set to multiply, it gets darker. So check this out. So this is, look at the like pink shadowing on the skull and her face. So when it's set to normal, it has a nice saturation to it. If you set it to multiply, it kills the saturation. Like it goes darker, it looks more like a real shadow. But I like that. I like the, like embracing the color of it. So maybe we just do that. I guess her, the side of her face would be casting a shadow onto her hair too, right? So it's like, yeah, this one's tough, man. This is a, this is like one of the harder panels I'd say in the whole book. But we could put some purple on the antlers. Again, we have to be really careful that you leave the edges green so that the whole thing still like pops off the background, but it's kind of cool. It's okay. Hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, color, color to the coloring stream. That's perfect. I 
I never saw. I don't know if I ever saw any of the Expendables movies, but I guess he he would be in the Expendables movies, right? He's Dolph Lundgren, like he's a god. Of course, he's like the action god. Of course, he'd be in those movies. Did they make his character have a master's degree or something? That would make sense. Also, remember that Dolph Lundgren has another power. He can smell crime. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren is just a nose with a body. <laughs> he can smell crime. looks pretty cool um, the feeling of getting one of those printed volumes to your door oh you mean like your own comic like after you make it yeah it's insane it's so satisfying to get your own comic in the mail I have I have times in my life where it genuinely feels like this will never be done. I think I'm just, I had this, so I had this extra glow here, right? So look at like the top of the book. Uh, this, this space between her arm, like she's gesturing like this and like the space between her arm and the top of the tray, like this negative space. If I put this glow here, it, it adds a sense that it's glowing, but it also like kind of kills the, I don't know, like there's something kind of nice about the, uh, contrast of it. I'm going to take some of it away. All right, we're getting somewhere. That's pretty good. Man, this page is almost done. Ugh. Like it really just needs like, I'll probably do like one more pass on the lighting. I have to be careful. I, I get like way too detailed, like, I get like way too in the weeds on this stuff. And like, I've been trying not to like overdo the coloring on this issue. It's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. I could like the pro so what I did for the the second issue actually almost killed me like phys my physical health was like pretty poor <laughs> by the time I finished it because I was I oh god I spent so m there's like one page in there where I would never go that far let me see if I can find it um I think it's the last page of issue two is it issue two I gotta show this page because it's like when you see how much detail I put into it, it's like, why did you do that? Like, there's no, no one will ever like. There's detail and then there's like actual like insanity. Like, 
Yeah, this one. Is it this one? No, there's another one. Anyway, like, I've been trying not to do this to myself again. Because I almost died doing this. This issue, like, for some reason, this issue, like, really killed me. Because I, I made everything so tight and, like, crisp. It does look sick, though. It looks like old, like, 80s heavy metal. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> anyway, this one, like, this issue is, like, so, was so difficult. Like, I, I, oh, yeah, it was, like, this sequence. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 13, like, page 11. It's the lab sequence. Page 8, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I would never do this now. Because I just realized how, like, I would never be able to invest the kind of time now that I did when I colored this page. Um, like, I can, I can, I'm a much faster uh, colorist now. But, like, some of this, this sequence in the lab, like, I seriously feel like I spent, like, like, three days just on this panel. Because I went in, look at this. If you actually look, like, there's no reason that I should have spent this much time. Like, I colored the highlights around the edges of every, like, stainless steel tray. And I, like, actually made the blue. There's, like, the medical waste, uh, the red medical waste bin or whatever it is. But then there's, like, blue containers. And I made them, like, semi-transparent plastic. Like, you can see the back of the cabinet through the blue plat like i did all of this on purpose <laughs> like every jar has like correct highlighting <laughs> like edge lighting and stuff like it's insane every screen every screen has its own gradient like her hair look at how many tones are in her hair like the back lip of this tray is lit but the front is shadowed but there's also the reflection of this wall in the like I could never do this now. This panel <laughs> killed me. I put I put color variation on every like individual piece of like particle board or whatever, like piece of wood that they like cobbled together. There's like shading on every object back here. I never would do this now because it just like killed me. Like this is probably our best looking issue color wise, but uh Man, it really, it like, you can tell that it's, it, like, the details there. But then we got to, to this one, and I was like, no. Like, there's no way. And, like, the colors are much looser. But I guess it fits the, it fits the idea that these are, like, dream sequences. Um, but I, I learned the hard way that, like, nobody really notices that stuff. Like, even people who... Even people who like really notice details don't really notice that stuff. Yeah, that was bad. I'm glad I did it just to like say that I could, you know? But I think we both, I think we both learned our lesson on, on that issue. How long does it take? Uh, so this issue, the pan, the pages are taking me like. This one is actually one of the most time-consuming ones. They're taking me like four hours, between four and like eight hours, I think, um, which is not that bad. But the problem is, I mean, to be honest, like the real problem is is not that it like four hours is actually really reasonable, like. I've gotten it down to the point where if I, I, I sit and focus, I can like knock these out in f four or six hours, which is like completely reasonable. But I also can only really work like at night or when I'm not working on other things. So sometimes I only have like half an hour or an hour at a time. So it could still take me like, 
And then there are days where I can't work on coloring because I'm busy. So even if it only takes you six hours to do a page, that's not something that you can like sit down, at least for me, I don't have the time to sit down and do six hours nonstop. So I can't knock out like a page a day the way you should if you're like a professional, you know, comic colorist and that's all you do. But some of the pages in the second issue, the ones we were just looking at, I mean, we're like 20 hours easily. I've probably got, I've probably got six hours in this page that we're doing right now. But some of the pages in this book are black and white, like because they jump between different worlds. The black and white pages are great. I definitely understand why like uh, manga is black and white. Because they're trying to hit those like weekly deadlines sometimes. And uh, man, black and white is so much faster. Like it's like, I never really, I've, I've worked in black and white, but I never did like full sequences in black and white. Our stuff was always color. And uh, when you do a black and white page, like you can knock that out so much faster. Even like the really detailed pages in black and white, I, I f figured out are like actually like much faster. Like this one. Hang on. Yeah, like this was a really detailed sequence. Um, like Lydia drew all the uh, the tables and chairs and like perspective lines, but I just did like more of like a '90s manga style where I just like selected every table and then just put one dark gradient over every single table at once and then just like put a gradient over the floor um i think the most detail i put in this is that i actually went in and like shaded the columns correctly so that like the faces of the columns are shaded um but even then it's like a flat gray tone on each face you know what i mean like it really the hardest part is just using like the pen tool or the lasso tool to just sit there and like block out the shapes but man it was so much faster like I bet this one only took me like three I think this page only took me like three or four hours even though it looks like a, it's murder Okay, cool. I think that's enough on this one. I'm, I can finish this one quickly later. Um, actually, maybe might be coming around on the orange plants. I don't know. Yeah, monthly is... I feel like, I feel like weekly or every two weeks is like, so unreasonable for comics of any kind even if you're like just doing even if you're not even shading them even if you're just doing the line art it's still so crazy to do like a chapter a week or a chapter every two weeks the art the art does get a lot better if you give somebody like an extra month or an extra week push or two and suddenly they have a month all right so this one is close i'm gonna i'm gonna say this one's gonna be done by tomorrow um, this page is done. So we can switch to some ice. Page 21. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty crazy. The only people who are really keeping up that pace are like being driven by publishers' deadlines. I think most indie people who are self-publishing are on really slow timelines compared to what like a One Piece fan is used to, you know? Okay, so I gotta, I gotta like mentally switch gears because I'm, I wanna switch to ice. So I've already done 
the ice sequence here. So we just kind of have to replicate that. Um, how did I how did I build this? Okay, so I had a gradient. Put the hair in. Put some shading in. Oh, okay. So it's a gradient and then I like layered some like shading back over top of the gradient here. And then and then put highlights in with the halftone brush, just with like white. This is a good example of like my sort of how I'm trying to shift my coloring into like less detail, more feeling to save time. Because it's really like, it looks great, like at a distance. If you zoom in, it's pretty sloppy, but it doesn't really matter because it's like kind of an abstracted series of shapes, you know? Yeah, and then I put a vivid light gradient back over that that is sort of the key right it's like it's okay but it gets kind of like low it gets kind of like low energy like there's not like super poppy bright colors until you put this blue gradient back over it and then it just like zings it's like electric so we got to kind of replicate some of that <laughs> some of that feel Um, on this page. And then this bottom panel is like, so, like basically just like pure emotion. Like it doesn't really need to have that much detail. It just needs to have like, I think we, I think you can do these pretty quickly. Let me see. I like the idea that her skin is like turning white as she sort of like, cause it's not just that the ice is like overtaking her. It's that she's like, kind of like freezing, you know, like it's, it's an emotional state as much as it is like a literal physical one. And it's that sense of being chilled to the bone. So you want her skin to be pale. So you get kind of like that feeling as a reader, you know, of like intense hypothermia almost. And then we have some like incredible hand lettering going on with the uh, Calvin and Hobbes AUG. <laughs> so we'll do that. Let's do that. Let's, uh, oops, let's get that in now so that we actually know what kind of like compositional effect the lettering has. I guess we'll just make it green for now because we know almost everything is not going to be green on this page. It's going to be blue ice. And then this panel is going to be all like fire, the red chili man, like yellow glows. So green's a pretty safe bet for the lettering. Like that's always going to pop. We we'll make a layer called AUG. AUG. Yeah, peanuts. Oh yeah, it doesn't Bill Watterson. Does Bill Watterson do the AUG? because he's so influenced by Charles Schultz? I think so. I know I know that Peanuts is like the biggest influence on Bill Watterson. 
I know that from reading the uh, Calvin and Hobbes, like every every big newspaper comic back then had all their collected editions like that we all had, like the essential Calvin and Hobbes, the indispensable Calvin and Hobbes. Farside did it too. There were like Farside collections. Um, Foxtrot did it. I had some of the Foxtrot comics. Mutz did it. But then all of them had some book that was like an anniversary book that was like the same size, but it was it had a bunch of like behind the scenes stuff. Farside had the pre-history of the Farside. I can't remember what the Calvin and Hobbes behind the scenes book was called. But they like show you early things or like Bill Watterson wrote like some blurbs and I remember he said how much he was influenced by peanuts in those in that book I was like a, I vividly remember reading that and I remember as a kid being like oh like I read that Bill Watterson liked peanuts and peanut uh, peanuts was in the newspaper when I was a kid and I always thought it was stupid <laughs> I was like this is boring like it's maybe I think at that point Charles Schultz was like very elderly and like was not you know maybe putting in the same effort god bless him but like i remember thinking peanuts wasn't that good when i was a kid but i think i ch i really changed my mind about it when i realized how much bill waterson was influenced by peanuts and i i like tried to sort of view it through a new lens and i think i bought some peanuts collections later and sort of like saw some of the 60s and 70s stuff that was pretty good but by the time <laughs> I was in like sixth grade. I remember Peanuts in the newspaper was like, it was like three panels and it would be like, Snoopy, where's Charlie Brown? And then Snoopy would like point. And then they'd be like, no. Like, like, the, like it would be literally like Lucy being like, Snoopy, have you seen Charlie Brown? And then the second panel would be <laughs> Snoopy pointing. And then the third panel would be like Lucy, like with her hands on her hips, like, Charlie Brown, you get over here. That like that was literally like what Peanuts was by the, <laughs> by the time the '90s rolled around. And I remember being like, "This is what you were influenced by, Bill Watterson." But I remember going back and reading '60s Peanuts when he still had like a little bit maybe more energy. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Charles Schultz. I'm sorry. Like rolling in his grave right now. There were like, <laughs> there were definitely like some incredible newspaper comics when I was a kid. It was like Foxtrot. I like looked forward to reading Foxtrot every morning. Um, Calvin and Hobbes, you know, incredible. And then there would be like the ones that were still totally like, they were, they were like a hundred years old. <laughs> they were still somehow being published. And they were like so low effort, like Beetle Bailey. This probably means nothing to anybody anymore because Beetle Bailey was like so old when I was a kid. But you'd be like, <laughs> or there was a comic called BC, I remember, that was about cavemen. And it was like every single strip was so boring. I remember like as a kid, it was like there were some really good ones, some really good newspaper comics. And there were the ones where you were like, my grandparents read them and like they were still doing them and they were so like phoned in it's sort of like the garfield effect you know like garfield the newspaper strip like slowly just became three panels of like garfield don't eat this lasagna then the lasagna is gone and he's like garfield like the garfieldification of newspaper strips like it happens over like a century Check the the phone and send you the number. Okay, one sec. Did you text it to me? My phone is occupied. Here, give me one sec. Hang on. I don't know. I didn't get a number. Tell me where it is. If it, if it's on text, let me know, because I don't I don't have one. Here. 
I gotta sync up the sound of, of everything. But yeah, newspaper strips are like, uh, I feel like nobody reads, nobody reads newspaper comics anymore because nobody reads the newspaper, but that was like a pretty important part of my childhood. I think that's like, I think before I even read comic books, I read newspaper comics. Um, and I think that like, specifically, I think comic books are obviously incredible, but I think there was something fun about newspaper strips being more loose, more cartoony. Um... Like, there was something kind of magical about about how quickly they were done and, like, how kind of, like, some of, some of the techniques, I think, like, people could learn from now. I think people who only read comic books, especially, as, well, actually, one of the reasons I think manga is so popular right now is it's more expressive, like, it's more fun, it's more, like, engaging. American comics got really stiff at some point. Like, I mean, there's exceptions. And I think, and it's funny because all the people who I think are actually like really making waves in the American comic scene right now are, are more cartoony. Like, I think of people like Daniel Warren Johnson. Like, he really understands how to like exaggerate things to make them interesting. Um, I think one of the reasons like manga is so popular is that people are like, uh, more willing to have fun, like, you know, stretch anatomy or change somebody's expression, like, to the extreme, you know? And I think, I think American comics at some point got really stiff, and, like, people started using photo references and, like, AutoCAD to, to draw backgrounds that are, like, perfectly in perspective, and it got really, like, I don't know, just got, like, kind of boring. And all my all my favorite American comic artists are much more like cartoonists, you know what I mean? I don't know where tell me where the code went. I don't know where the code went. Give me one sec, sorry. We're trying to figure out, we got that thing where somebody sent a code to my phone and you need the code to like sign in. My phone is currently occupied streaming. sync up the sound again. So when I stream, when I stream, I like also film myself so that I can like cut all this stuff up later into highlights. And it, uh, it works really well until it doesn't because you have all these devices going like you've got a separate camera and like a separate mic and like you're running different sound levels you got your sound levels for your like actual stream and you got the sound levels for like the offline recording that you're going to use to like cut into content later it's like a whole thing there we go all right so i got to sync levels go like this like the old school clap like director's clapper thing on a movie set. Yeah, so I think this is going to be pretty fast. Like, it's so, f I mean, this is actually like part of the skill of being a comic uh, colorist is like really knowing where to save time, like what cheats look good. And I think like doing ice 
in a very like rough haphazard way actually it looks better almost to not try to follow all these little lines because it gives it more of a I don't know like it feels like nature like nature isn't very precise um, especially when it's like you know a, an organic form that's like part water or something so I think this page is actually gonna go I mean we'll see this one might be the chili is probably gonna be tough but I think this ice stuff is actually gonna be not that bad because I just did a really quick pass and it already is like looks pretty good it's taking me longer to flat out the lettering honestly Yeah, uh, so so Dencho the I hope I'm saying your name right Dencho, but uh, Juan, Juan Jimenez is like like a serious I would say like serious influence right Lydia like probably more for I think Lydia knows more of his stuff than I do, but I mean I don't know if people realize that like most of the great like science fiction artists especially European like they were all they all published their best stuff in heavy metal people like uh or European I guess Juan Jimenez is uh not European technically right but um a lot of non-American science fiction greats like Mobius or Jimenez or uh Enki Bilal like they were all they all had their best stuff in heavy metal so i'm always talking about like yeah like heavy metal heavy metal magazine is like our one of our biggest kind of like that's like the thing that our stuff is the most similar to but um i think a lot of people haven't i mean it's hard to get your hands on actual issues of heavy metal and they don't do a good job of they've never made like a collection of heavy metal magazine they take stories out of heavy metal and they collect them like the the Incal, right? Like the Incal was all in heavy metal. And everybody knows Mobius did the Incal, but I because they collect it as the Incal and most people have read it as the Incal like trade paperbacks, like they don't I think a lot of people don't realize it was like serialized first in heavy metal. Um but anyway, all those guys are like huge huge influences for for me personally. Um and weirdly become more and more important to me as I get older. Because one thing that's happened to me is as I've gotten older, I'm kind of less and less interested. This is just this is just how it how it is, I don't know. I'm less and less interested in like traditional superhero stuff. I think just because I was so uh, insanely addicted to superhero stuff when I was younger. Um I like I still love all the stuff that I I liked when I was younger, like all the best superhero stuff. But as I've gotten older, I just feel like I kind of got it out of my system when I was young. And I'm kind of more and more interested in like non-traditional comics or self-contained stories that are less about keeping the lore going forever and are more about the actual like craft of like telling a complete story in a certain amount of pages. So as I've gotten older, I've gotten like more and more interested in you know, things like heavy metal, um, anything short story, anything like independent science fiction comics or just like unusual comics, underground comics. Richard Corbin is the other one that I've become more and more interested in as I've gotten older. Also a heavy metal, regular heavy metal contributor. Um, yeah. Frazetta, Frank Frazetta. A lot of like those guys in the 70s and 80s who were doing like sword and sorcery art, like I've become more and more interested in that stuff. I don't know why. Oh yeah. Do people mispronounce your name, Densho? Is that like common? 
I wonder... I wonder how somebody would mess that up. Well, I'm glad I didn't. I'm always so worried when I like read someone's question that I'm gonna say their name wrong, to be honest. Yeah, the Meta Barons, man, dude, the, the old, I'm telling you, the older I get, the more I, like, am obsessed with the Johto, Johto verse. Like, the Incal and the Meta Barons, like, it's, oh, man, it's so masterful. Like, I think one thing that I realized about a lot of those, like, 70s and 80s sci-fi and fantasy guys um is like how influential they were on filmmakers in the 70s and 80s. Like when you actually watch like movies like Alien or The Fifth Element or whatever, like movies that we all grew up like watching and like everybody knows and loves. Or like John Carpenter movies even. Like when you when you realize that all of those filmmakers were reading Heavy Metal magazine or were like influenced by like album covers that those artists did. Like I think you real like it sort of feels like when you read like the Meta Barons or the Incal or the Nicopol trilogy. Like it feels like you're going back to the source of like everything that I love. And I don't know if I fully understood how influential that stuff was when I was younger. And now now I'm like, oh my god, like these guys were visionaries. Like they they inspired everyone. Like we wouldn't have had the look of like the Terminator or Alien. You know, without without these guys, or like the Conan movie, which I I've always loved, like the Conan the Barbarian movies from the '80s, the early '80s. Um, and like the Fifth Element is basically like the Mobius movie. I mean, it really is. They're just like all his designs and world building. It's basically like if you took the Incal universe and made like a different story inside it. <laughs> you're trying to, you're asking for my social security number <laughs> okay i have to do this not on the screen so i don't like dox myself and get screwed <laughs> somebody in chat asking for my ssn hang on god i hope nobody can see this All right, please don't let anybody see that. <laughs> okay. That reminds me of like those things that people used to do where they'd be like, they'd be like, uh, <laughs> whoa, when you type your password, it does, it just shows up as dots. Does anybody remember that? That was like a thing like years ago. Like when people were less internet savvy, there'd be like forums or something it was, it was like on forums people would be like whoa weird when i type my password it just shows up as dots look and then they would like write like eight dots <laughs> and then somebody would be like wait let me try and then they would just like write their password <laughs> and then people would just like immediately steal their account that was that was a weird period of the internet that was like 2002 <laughs> Whoa, when I write my password, it's just dots. <laughs> I really miss like 2002 internet, by the way. That was a good time. If you were not alive and active on the internet back then, let me tell you, it really was really fun. Because there was like just these little like silos, like. Like, if you wanted to talk about movies, you could go to the movie place. And if you wanted to talk about comics, you go to the comic place. And, like, if you wanted to watch Homestar Runner cartoons, you go to homestarrunner.com. You know what I mean? Like, it just felt like there were these special little, like, fun places you could visit. And I really miss it. Now it's just, like, everything is a garbage dump of everything, you know? <laughs> yeah, whoa, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> totally. 
please it, please do not write your anybody who's trying to write their actual password in the chat do not write your password it's totally like an old meme from like 20 years ago oh i gotta yeah i haven't read the second cycle of uh meta Bar meta baron right like i haven't read that you know what is really good that feels like it's got the spirit of those old, like, classic sci-fi comics? Is the Dune the Dune adaptation that came out. I've got, like, a hardcover slipcase of it. I can't remember the artist. But the new, um, the new, like, Dune adaptation that's, like, coming out in comic form is really good. It feels like something that would be in, like, old 80s heavy metal magazine. Highly recommend. And I think it's an adaptation of the book and not the movie. Now, uh, well, now I can't remember because I, I read it, but it was, I read it when the first movie came out. But now I can't remember if it follows the nuances of the book or not. But yeah, the Dune comic is actually really good. I don't know if the second volume is out. But if you like Meta Barons or stuff like that, it's got that vibe. Got it. Wait, let me find it. I've got the Dune. Let me see who the artist is. Yeah, it's this one. Um. Oh well, no wonder it's reminiscent of uh, old heavy metal. It's Raoul Allen really good though I think it's based on the book cuz it's like but the coloring is cool it's like uh it's got that like warm and cool thing going where like they'll be in a they're on the desert planet but then um their shadows are all blue. So you get that really cool, like warm and cool thing that I'm trying to do with this book. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, the Dune, the Dune collection is awesome. Yeah, this is definitely an adaptation of the book because they're calling it Frank Herbert's Dune, the graphic novel. Yeah, I need to reread it. I read it when the first movie came out, and now I don't remember the nuances of the movie and the book and the graphic novel. All right, thanks for being here, Lydia, and for answering everybody's question. I know they all really appreciate it. So I'm just going to do some ice. Uh, in the same style, I'm going to try this page, I'm going to try to build up these two panels equally, so that they match. Because the danger is you like finish this panel, and then you don't remember exactly what you did to build up all your layers and you have trouble replicating the look on this panel. But they're literally like on the same page and the reader is going to see both of them at the same time so they have to match so the way that you make them consistent is you build them up equally at the same time so you don't kind of forget what techniques you used or how you put them together if that makes sense
There's my dog. My dog is barking. Hey, come here. It's okay. Yeah. Come here, Rose. Come here. See if she'll stay on my lap. Okay. So yeah, I'm just trying to build this up. The truth is like by the time you get to this last panel in the sequence of like the ice overtaking her, by the time you get to this panel, like the ice has almost fully like, like invaded her mind and her, it's like, it's, it, this reminds me of that scene in the first Matrix movie where the like l the mirror turns into liquid metal and then it like goes down his throat. Like that's kind of the vibes here, and I think uh, it's so chaotic that it might actually just end up being like a mostly white panel. You know. My dog is barking, but there's not really anything I can do about it because she's like the barkiest little dog ever. <laughs> so actually what looks cool, so I'm gonna go pretty monochromatic this is like an, an uh, this is like a pretty helpful tip if you're doing if you're doing anything temperature based like if you want to communicate extreme heat or extreme cold it's good to go like monochromatic so I want you to feel like everything in this panel is freezing so even if her you know she has like uh, her eyes the her jewelry her nose ring her her lips her gums like all that stuff obviously is not blue like i've painted her in other panels where her lips are pink or her you know her eyes are green or whatever but if you want to create the sense that somebody's like freezing to death then you just go monochromatic so i'm going to make everything various shades of blue so we'll do her her eyes blue The ring, the piercing blue. Her lips are blue. And and her gum we'll do her gums too. But I just like really it's like such a cheat. Like we have such like as as readers, we've been trained, you know, our whole lives to accept that like warm colors are are temperature wise like hot and warm and cool colors, like all the blues and purples are temperature wise cool. So if you're really trying to like oversell that, like a scene where somebody's freezing to death or is climbing Everest or is like lost in the Arctic, like you just embrace it. Oh yeah, I'll make her tongue blue too. Like everything in all of all the like tissue in her, all the like skin and tissue in her mouth and face. Like I just want that to feel like she's like got hypothermia, you know. Uh, 
and uh, I mean, it's I'm calling it monochromatic, but I'm gonna actually go in with various different blues. It's monochromatic in the sense that it's um, it's blue it's blue based, but I'm gonna go in with like subtle changes in the blues and actually like you know <laughs> kind of vary it actually a lot more than just putting one shade. So the first thing I can do is put a gradient over it. That'll help. And the other thing I can do is erase back things like her gums so they're not as dark as her lips, just to give it some contrast, you know? while also darkening things like her tongue, you know? Because obviously her mouth is gonna have more shadow inside it than any other part of her face. It's like, and so that adds a really nice sense of depth. But again, I'm using everything, everything's still blue. Like I'm just come kind of ignoring reality and I'm giving you the cartooning shortcut language for I'm very cold, you know what I mean? I mean, that's, it's already like really scary. <laughs> like it's very intense. It makes me uncomfortable. I mean, Amir, I'm glad you're checking on us, Amir. We can get up to trouble. Um, I wonder if the shadows just to make this a little bit more varied and interesting, I wonder if I can make some of the shadows more purple just to just to give it something different. Let's try that. Yeah, it's kind of nice. It's not really purple. It's a, it's a little bit more purple than than uh, the other blues I was using, but it's not like crazy or anything. I mean, it's not like, again, the danger is that you use a color that's too warm and then you lose that like sense of chill that you're trying to communicate, you know? It definitely works. See, there's already enough color variation in here so that it's not feeling like monotonous, you know? But it still feels very much like one vibe, one temperature, one emotion, you know? And I'm just kind of following Lydia's... Uh, Lydia does a nice job of shading her own stuff really well. 
So I'm just kind of trying to follow like where she is telling me the shadows are, you know? Like I'm looking for these areas here where she's put more lines down or darkened, put more like areas of shadow down. Because that's, that's where the shadows are. Like I'm mostly just obeying what, I'm mostly just obeying what the artist's vision is, you know? It really works. I mean, it's not that complicated um, or detailed, but it definitely like feels like somebody made of ice or somebody who's getting overtaken by ice, you know? <laughs> I tried an effect where a character gets zapped by lightning and made two layers of the line art have these white and blue coloring. Cool. Dang, I love a good lightning effect, man. I'm a sucker for a good lightning effect. We've got um we've got a lot of lightning in uh issue one in interdimensional one. I feel like interdimensional one is the most um like hard sci fi we've done. Like it feels kinda like like a Ray Bradbury story or something. And it's got that kind of like 50s electric, like a lot of things are, are electronic, sparkly, crackly, kind of like electric vibe. Oh, see, now we got the cat visiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Man, I wish every panel were this easy. Like, obviously it needs some more, but, like, this is, like, close. You know what I mean? Like, you could stop there. You could stop here and publish it, and I wouldn't be, like, super mad. I want, I want there to be more detail and stuff, but, like, this communicates everything we're trying to do, you know? Yeah, so, the, uh... 80s lightning is one of my favorite i don't know exactly is there a name for is there like a formal film name for it like i call it 80s lightning but it's like rotoscoped hand-drawn blue it's that like super blue hand-drawn rotoscoped lightning from the 80s it's in like yeah back to the future terminator ghostbusters it's in like every every movie from the 80s and i like love it it's so cool it's like way, way too blue. It doesn't look real, but it totally adds to the sense of like fantasy, you know, of those old movies. I think it's because it's hand drawn, right? It's like all hand rotoscoped. That would be a good name for a band, 80s Lightning. Like if you were in like a heavy metal band that played like old school like Iron Maiden or like Judas Priest kind of like throwback metal, you should call your band 80s Lightning. Or actually like Rotoscope. If you're in like a retro metal band, you should call yourself Rotoscope. It's like a cool, it sounds kind of like technical, like an 80s and it like evokes like fantasy and sci-fi movies from the 80s but you could spell it with a k it could be like rotoscope with a k and then an umlaut over the o somebody do that 
Oh, yeah. Big Trouble in Little China has them. Yeah, that probably is, like, the best use of it, right? 80s lightning. Is there such a thing as planning ahead too much? Um... I mean, I guess if planning ahead keeps you from actually taking action to, like, f work on your actual final artwork or final comic, maybe. But I would say probably one of the biggest tells that somebody's inexperienced is that they don't plan ahead enough. Like, I feel like I sometimes read indie comics and I can see that somebody, like, got too excited and started too early and, like, they kind of figure... Like, literally, the art changes over the course of, like, the first 10 pages. Like, they they should have spent time, like, solidifying the look of everything. But they just started drawing the final comic. And, like, you can see the drift that should have happened over the course of, like, concept art or, like, sketches and design. So I don't, I don't know. I think people get really impatient. I think one thing that Lydia and I do well is we spend a lot of time planning, but maybe, maybe the one thing we do wrong is we take too long to release our final comic. <laughs> so maybe there is such a thing as planning ahead too much, but I think you can, I think if you have the patience to actually design out everything and like really think about what your world's going to be and look like, like I think it shows and I think people really appreciate it. Yo, this, I think this panel's sick. It, we're going to need, need to do a pass of highlights, which will actually really help. Like, if I'm going to do some color shift here, and then I'll go in and do some highlights, and it'll be done. So I'm just layering gradients and flipping through different blending modes until I kind of get the look I'm going for. Yeah, that's not bad. pretty good and I think actually I can flip this gradient I'm gonna flip this gradient around and put one over here oh you know what I'll just draw a new one So if you pay attention to the, the right side over here, you can see me flipping through different blending modes. And I don't, I'm not super familiar, like it's weird because I use blending modes all the time. I don't know exactly what they all do, to be honest. Like I just flip until I see one that I like. But I don't technically sometimes like I can tell you like oh I know how I know how multiply works like multiply like pl like um, is additive and it like layers it like eliminates white and I know that like overlay is like reductive or like subtractive and it like lightens things and color dodge is subtractive but I don't always know what like some of these do. Yeah, that's cool. I was just trying to bring the blue back. Like, I was having fun with purple, but it felt like I was getting too purple. And I sort of wanted to create, like, a, a halo of blue. So this is what it was before. It, was, it got really purple, and I felt like I was kind of losing that, like, really, like, super cold ice feel. 
So I just added blue back into the edges, like around the edges of the panel. So this is what it looks like after. It's nice. <laughs> Harry, you like the Harry likes the crazy peppers mustache. Wait. Well then Harry, you're gonna love this one. Look. Uh we gotta find the the real there's like a really crazy chili pepper here. Yeah, this one. Because his mustache is actually green, like when you color it. Um, so I'm actually going to be doing that on this middle panel. Basically, this middle panel is going to kind of replicate this exact look that I was doing on this page. Oh, man. Sorry, hang on. Yeah, so it's actually really similar. This is where there's like efficiencies in um, when you color comics. You can usually refer to previous things you've done so that now I look at this on the left and I look at the one on the right and I'm like, oh, I know exactly how to color him. You know what I mean? Like I've already established exactly how his palette looks. So this one on the right is going to be like basically the slightly more insane version of the one on the left. But yeah, his mustache is actually green when you color it. Does anyone have advice on how to draw dynamic poses for characters? Um, buy one of those little um, uh, articulated models, you know? There's like, they're really popular with manga artists. Like I think a lot of them are made by Japanese companies. Buy one of the, cause like American art stores sell wooden articulated figures, but they're kind of like stiff. Like they don't bend as much, but the one, the Japanese ones are usually made of plastic and they are like, wait, like you can really like get cool poses out of them. Um, you'll see manga artists with like those little articulated plastic figures, like sitting on their computer or like laying down across their desk, but they use them for drawing, like drawing reference. Okay, so now we'll go in with highlights on this panel and I'll, I'll get like ice highlights in here. can't stop thinking about 80s lightning now it's so good it's like such a simple look and it's like the look of someone who takes the time to hand draw it you know that's like such a good example of technology and creativity doesn't necessarily make the final output better like none of that blue ilm 80s lightning like looks good from like a realism standpoint but it's so much more engaging than what we can do now with like perfect cg renders of lightning or like electricity like if i were directing a film i would like instruct the cg team to like try to make the lightning look bad like make it look like 80s ilm lightning you know because like i want the audience to have that like emotional kind of like reaction to it It's like in the Lego movie. Like the Lego movie, they like used computers, but the whole thing was designed to like look like a Lego stop motion film. Like they even put like chips and scratches on the paint so that it looked like a bunch of like loved, you know, used Lego characters. And like they purposely added like lensing problems and like all kinds of stuff to make it look like it was really stop motion instead of CG.
All right, yeah, so I'm, this is where the halftone brushes work really well. So I'm going in and I'm putting highlights in um, with, like I could just be using like a solid brush for this. There, sorry. My dog is still in my lap, but she's making me uncomfortable. Sorry, Rose. So I could be using like, I could be using like a solid brush for this stuff and just like going in and painting in like blocks basically. But this is where halftone brushes work so well because it's like, it's the same idea, but that extra texture, it's like the same idea as, a, as if I was just using a regular brush to do these kind of like ice highlights. But that extra texture from the dots feels like frost crystals. So it's like a super, like, and I don't have to do, it doesn't take me any longer, you know what I mean? It's still the same workflow of like using a brush and just like painting in highlights. But that extra texture on the halftone brush like automatically makes it feel like more developed. It gives it more character. It feels like there's like ice crystals taking over her. And it's not just highlights, you know? That's why I like I'm obsessed with halftone brushes because the, those dots feel like ice crystals. They feel like embers off of a fire or like mist off of a waterfall. So like you kind of can do two things at once if you use them. It's cool. It like really, it's it's quite the uh, quite the look. It really helps add character to your pages and stuff. You know. I really like this panel. Uh, if only they were all this fast and easy, you know what I mean? Just like an expressive. An expressive, you know, single iconic image. It's so easy to like. treat this kind of panel more like a painting that you can kind of like give this all these expressive br brush strokes to and you don't have to get fiddly with all the details. It's nice. I mean, it might be done, right? Like, it's so close. If it's not done, it's like close. The one thing that I don't like... <clears throat> is how abrupt the highlights feel down here where it gets like really dark. So I am gonna kind of like make a semi-opaque mask gradient on it and just kind of fade them off a little bit. Not that much. Yeah, that's nice. It's subtle, but here, look. There's before where they're like really harsh highlights even, even down here and then after just kind of knocks them back and it just feels more like dimensional but yeah i i feel like that's dumb like i feel like i just knocked that out and now yeah i'm gonna move the sound effect up we can put a half tone or a gradient on the lettering um here I don't know if I like that actually. The green pops so nicely. Like I, I liked the idea of a half tone on it, but I think it actually kind of damages the. It could be orange. Orange and blue, that's kind of nice. That's pretty bold though. Like rarely do I get a chance to fade orange to green. 
but the orange pops super nice off the blue and then it fades into this like super lime green. It's cool. I like it. And then we can go in with a half tone brush. I still have the, yeah. And just put something on top of it. Kind of give it like a character. Cool, man. I like it. That's a that's a panel right there. Oh, she needs something in the corners of her eyes here. She needs just like a little something to give her eyes some dimension. And so Lydia drew, like, she's got, like, uh, frost on her eyelashes, so we should put those in. Let me get back. I think we can do it with the halftone brush here. Cool, I like that. I feel like that's done, man. There you go. We just knocked out a frost panel. I did I did what I said, I did exactly what I said you shouldn't do, which is I finished the whole panel. I should have been, every time I laid down a new layer on this top panel, I should have done it on the bottom. But maybe it's better for stream for people to see a whole panel come together quickly so you guys can see it happen. But now, check it out. So now when you look at the sequence, it works really well. Because you've got... Like, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to be printed. I, I don't know if they're going to be a... Like, I don't know if you're going to be able to see these two pages at once or if you're going to turn the page and then see this one. But either way... That's like a really solid like story narrative. You know what I mean? Because it's like this panel on the top right has the same colors that I used in the bottom two panels on the previous page. So you kind of understand what's happening, that they're all flowing together. She's getting more and more overtaken by ice. It's good. Cool. Well, oh yeah, my screen is frozen. That's right. I, I, uh, I don't think I can do anything about it without uh, restarting OBS, but. I was kind of done anyway. I Basically what you're looking at on this, I can see my stream. What you're looking at is, is the finish panel, basically. Um, it turned out really good. I just wanted to basically knock out like a frost, a frost panel and then uh, I wanted to finish up that one panel we started on, which we almost did, with the all the the green character on the orange background, and then uh, 
now we're frozen haha uh, on the uh, on the on the frost panel but I wanted to finish that up too but there you go that's pretty much it it's basically like one was like a really fiddly detailed panel and one was like more of an expressive almost like digital painting where you're moving fast and you're not obeying the lines as much as you're just trying to obey sh light and shadow and move really quickly so sorry it froze but you basically got to see the finished product um cool well i'm gonna go have dinner we were live for about three hours two and a half three hours um but thanks everybody for watching i'm glad to be back i'm gonna try to stream more now that i'm not sick and i'm on the mend and we'll uh Everybody join the Discord, uh, which is linked in our bio, uh, and keep being awesome to each other. People have been saying the Discord is like one of the least toxic artist communities that they've found online, which is like really good because that's exactly what I want it to be. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll do. We'll do we'll do more pages soon. I'm trying to pick up the pace. Probably the next time I stream, we'll be doing a black and another black and white page, but it'll have like color elements on it, which is always like some of the more technical, fun stuff to do. So everybody, stay tuned, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, join the Discord and ask questions. All right, bye everybody. Oh yeah, my whole thing is frozen, isn't it? All right, we gotta we're gonna force quit it.